literally so bad. None of her art is any good at all. Like, it's not good. I can't find one piece by her that I can, like, even slightly just... Why do people care about her? Maybe she's autistic. Look at this. Find TV people. Wait, no, this isn't. This, this isn't. But she didn't draw this. See, she calls herself an emote artist and can't draw her own panels. She knows if she drew them, she would have no problem. None of it is good! My sister could draw better than this when she was five years old. Oh, like, it just makes me upset that, like, some trash, I don't even want to call her an artist, some piece of trash who, like, learned how to use the digital, like, MS Paint and have more followers and attention and love. Like, Cause you freaking pricks just can't ever be quenched. Your, and your fantasies can't ever be quenched, can they? You freaking pricks. What will you learn? What will you learn? That your actions have consequences. Like, you know what? I have strong opinions, but I feel like online I need to chill so I can make friends online, but that I can't. Right, so the following clips that you have just seen have been collected over the course of the past five days on the internet. But guess what? This drama didn't happen five days ago on the internet. It happened on May 1st on the internet. And it's been a while, but for some reason, everyone and their mother made their videos at least one week ago or five days ago. But yet I haven't seen D'Angelo Wallace drop his video yet. So that means I'm still early. Great, fantastic. All right, that means this drama's still somewhat relevant, right? So let's start this video on the right foot then. So hello everybody, my name is Widget and I am back from the dead, the generic dead, not the real dead, just the generic type of dead that every artist kind of goes into every once in a while. All right, so let's talk about critiques. That's what this video is gonna be about. What makes a critique constructive yet sharp versus straight out malicious and considered bullying and then you just get yeeted into the sea of rudeness? Because once you're in the sea of rudeness, sadly, you're never going to escape. Sure, the internet will eventually wash it away, but there's no telling you someone's gonna just rip it out of the sea, the deep, dark parts of the sea. You never know when someone's gonna just, you know, show that off in your face again if something ever comes back. And you know what? That's what the internet does. It loves to hold things you've done in the past hostage. Lovely. Lovely, thanks internet, we appreciate that side of you. Besides that, it's good to know what makes a criticism an insult versus constructive. It seems very obvious, yet all of Hana's lovely vocabulary and words are also considered criticism. They weren't constructive, there wasn't any compliment sandwich, there was nothing. You know, she was just too savage for the likes of all of us. That's kind of why her and her boyfriend kind of got, you know, yeeted into the sea of rudeness. I'm going to take two examples that are somewhat relevant to our community, like Solar Sands and D'Angelo Wallace. Oh, you want me to talk about the whole drama? You want me to talk about the responses, all the insults? No, everyone and their mother, again, has already talked about this five days ago. I'm late and I want to add a different thing to the table. I want to give the art community a remedial class on criticism. That sounds absolutely fantastic. I think we all need a very good refresher on this. So none of us ruin our careers in two minutes flat. That being done and said, we're going to show you a point system. Yes, I have a point game because who doesn't love playing games that involve points when you're in school, right? Because we're all getting schooled in criticism now. I've divided our point system into four separate categories and each category has the basic breakdown of looking at the obvious basic information, two, analyze the artwork, describe what you see, three, design an interpretation, discuss how that uses principles, etc., etc., and then the fourth is make a judgment call judging the work. Uh, by the way, I divided all of this stuff via information from wikiHow, personal experience, and a study.com article, so I'll be linking all the information and more stuff below. If you want to know how to do epic gamer levels 
of critiquing. You are going to be the connoisseur of criticism. Now that we've discussed the division of topics, we can now discuss how the game will actually work. So we're going to have all three of our participants, Solar Sands, D'Angelo Wallace, and Kuno with the addition of his girlfriend. There will be four rounds to receive one point per round. Each point is received every time they cover a topic. However, each point can also be negative or positive. A positive point is when you've done that category well, basically just meaning that they follow the basic outline of rules that a good critique has. However, you are rewarded a negative point if you have touched on the subject, but you didn't do it very well, and it's considered more of an insult or malicious, and you know, just doesn't follow the standard dank critique method. We will begin with round one after a quick little note. Solar Sands' video is his actually critiquing your art. I know it's a slight bit different from his standard content, but it creates a good example. D'Angelo is judging other YouTubers' content. He's not necessarily judging the art. The video is the art itself. Okay, I know you're on the edge of your seat now. I'll talk about round one. All right, so round one. Round one would be, look at the obvious, the basic information. Do the participants show the background information of the piece so you can understand the interpretation better as the critiquer. This just means going over simple things like the artist. Who is the artist? What medium is it produced in? The size of the canvas, blah, blah, blah. The basic stuff that is just like very present when you step in the room, you're like, okay, this is critique day. Here's, here's this thing. Okay, got it. All right. We start off with Solar Sands. So for our first volunteer, we have this artist with, I guess she took the kids, huh? His example, he shows the basic information that's on the bottom of the DA page. That's good, he gets a positive point. Next is D'Angelo. Next up on this list is Eclipsing Art. So we are gonna watch Making Art with PowerPoint. Very sorry, oh boy. D'Angelo also shows the basic information, such as what program the art was made of, including relating to himself by showing off his art that he made in PowerPoint presentation. Next, we have Kuno and Hana. For, for, for art, for art, I think. Oh, for artist. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it literally looks like MS Paint, but like, one two. They do state the medium that the artist uses, but they use it in a very condescending way. As we know, MS Paint doesn't have the best or most professional correlation to digital art. Next is round two, analyzing the artwork and describing what you see. Do the players go through and describe the physical matter that is going on in the piece, the subject matter, the mood, the color, the style, the form, scale and proportion. And according to WikiHow, you should be using neutral terms at this point because you're talking about the art. You're not judging it at this point in time. That comes later down the line. So let's start round two off with our example of D'Angelo Wallace. I was thinking about doing a video on an art program suggested by one of you, but why would I do that so soon when I can tell you about the time I used PowerPoint to make a drawing. I actually used to make art in PowerPoint too. D'Angelo states his observations as well as complimenting it as he goes along. Our next example is Solar Sands. I guess we'll start with the face. Around this area, I don't know if you can see it after the video has been processed and whatnot, I noticed some very slight blurriness. It is most noticeable when you compare the lines of the fish and the lines of the eyebrows. It's obviously not a huge problem, but something I think they should be aware of. Moving on to the eyes. I had some trouble finding the lines where the whites of the eyes ended and where the rest of the face began. I'm glad that they didn't put black lines around the entirety of the eye, but maybe a slight extension to this line could help. Another thing I want to add is that the whites of the eyes are often not purely white, surprisingly. In a realistic portrait, the eyes would be much more gray, but in a simplified art style like this, they can get away with much brighter eyes. However, I do think that a grayish shadow below the top of the eyelid can give them much more depth and help signify where the eyes are located. When it came to the rest of the body, again it's simplistic. There's not too much to say on that front other than it looks like it fits. I would like to see some more attention directed toward the hands. Hands in art can be used as a tool to be more expressive. The hands in this could be larger in both width and length, one to give the rest of the body some more balance, and two to give some more room for the fingers. 
This hand could benefit a lot from some variety in finger placement. The fingers usually have a curve to them even when gripping something. It could be useful to experiment with that. As Sir Sands goes down describing the piece, he also offers technical solutions to the problems that he sees as he goes down point by point. He is combining steps three and four together as he makes each point and as he goes down the list. Solar Sands uses a very straightforward method it's critical and to the point, and it does a very good job of showing what a brief neutral critique is like. Not everyone enjoys this style of critique because it is a bit harsh. It's not as cuddly as, say, the compliment sandwich method, but it is still a very viable and to the point style of critique, and it is valid in its own way. You just have to make sure that the person who's receiving this knows you're gonna be like that. But that's if you uh, wanna give them that warning. Then finally for round two, we have Kuno. Oh, like it just makes me upset that like some trash i don't even want to call her an artist some piece of trash who like learned how to use digital like ms paint can have more followers and attention and love than my like kuno just because she has a vagina instead of like a dick so bad <laughs> it's so bad none of it is good none of it is good my sister could draw better than this when she was five years old Look at that. What is that? What is that? Look at those eyes. What is that? <laughs> Obviously, Hana is the ringleader here in saying most of these critiques. Hana is criticizing Neko based on features such as her gender or the amount of success she has. Be, be the kids say it these days clout, which obviously has almost nothing to do with the technical skill that Neko has. Hana states very unspecific remarks and retorts about Neko's art, calling it trash, saying, what is that? What are those? Which if she's trying to critique Neko's style, that doesn't work. Critiquing someone's style is a whole lot of different can of worms here that we are going to touch on later. But just a mini recap, non-specific remarks about art don't help anyone in their artistic journey. Another big point I'd like to stress about these critiques is that it's personal. And I and everyone else should agree that when you're critiquing art, it's much easier to stick to the subject you are critiquing. If you are critiquing the art, you are not critiquing the artist. Skill doesn't have feelings, however, an artist does. You need to take that into consideration when you're giving a critique. And Hana, obviously, is not being considerate of that and is bringing personal vendettas into this. Our third category is deciding on an interpretation. Discuss how the picture uses principles and balance. Does the examiner examine the work? What does it mean? How does it all come together? If you're in art class, I'm sure you'd love to list all the fundamentals and elements of art here. Insert that list right here. But that's what you're using. You're also talking about points of focus, discussing about how you think the interpretation of elements and principles in the artwork fit. I'm also inclined to say that this can kind of be mixed up with step four. Step four being making a judgment call and judging the work. What was successful or unsuccessful about the art? Your goal isn't to decide whether or not the art is really good or really bad. You're supposed to focus on what makes the work successful. You're also supposed to focus on evaluation of technical skill, theme, and organization. You need to be very clear in what is happening in the critique. It also helps to go beyond saying, I like it, I love it, I hate it. You have to go a bit further in your analysis so that the artist can grow from the critique. It also helps to give very specific reasons for certain judgments and explain what was successful and unsuccessful. Communication is everything here, people. And it also is very, very important to not make your judgment personal. Your job is to interpret the art come to a conclusion, and maybe sprinkle in some advice and solutions if you're feeling very nice today. So that's your friendly reminder that critiques are not rote. You shouldn't feel personally attacked after receiving a critique. However, comma, that does not mean 
someone who's giving you a very harsh and straight to the point critique is roasting you. They are just being very to the point. You have to know the difference, okay? Comprende? We got this, fam. I got you, fam. Let's go. So I kind of wrapped up Solar Sands in like, you know, like part two. But now we can go through and do D'Angelo and Kuno. Hooray! So let's start with D'Angelo then, shall we? Doing things like interactive buttons and transitions and custom animations. Yeah, I was that hoe. Um, yeah, I felt ready to delve into a sin that I maybe shouldn't have gone into. I like how whoever this is puts more effort into her visuals than channels that have like 10 times the amount of subscribers. About. Anyway, I really like her presentation. <laughs> Get it? Presentation? Because it's a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, I hope you like this video. You don't have to like the art. Okay, I love the attitude. The video was funny. The art um, I mean, obviously, I can't really judge this too harshly because it was quite literally done in Microsoft PowerPoint. So, again, this is why we are going to go to her Instagram. At X underscore ing. Okay? Whoa. This is actually really pretty. Okay, wow. I've made my decision. I really like the video. I appreciate the extra effort put into the visuals. And it was funny as well. The art obviously was not amazing. But her real art is quite amazing. So Eclipsing Art gets an A-. minus. Keep it up, Eclipsing Art. D'Angelo clearly states what he likes and what he doesn't like from the video. His words of positivity with the touchest littlest sprinkling of criticism is very soft. This is a very soft and cuddly style of criticism. It's not the harshest, you're not really gonna feel it as much, and sometimes it seems a bit muddy, but it's still another valid way to give criticism, especially those who are starting to work on critiques for the first time. Perhaps they don't really want to be, you know, pushed into the real world right now. Did I mention he also gave reasons? Okay, he gave reasons. All right, next, Kuno, you're up. She's literally so bad. None of her art is any good at all. Like, it's not good. I can't find one piece by her that I can, like, even slightly respect. But she didn't draw these. See, she calls herself an emote artist and can't draw her own, what are these, panels? She knows if she drew them, she would have no Six emotes. But they're not even good. They're not even good. How do you mess up emotes? Like, how did you do that? What I hated most is that she she tweeted about how she's been pursuing art for one year and it's been so hard for her and like literally everybody in the comments are like no you're doing so great i think you're already such a great artist you are too hard on yourself you need to like appreciate yourself more you're such a good artist and you're so inspirational all right so let's just get to the point kuno again him and hana no critical or helpful advice they're basically just insulting neko and that was the whole thing. It was just a bunch of insults, and yeah. Basically, you can hardly, hardly, basically zero, no. Kuno and Hana, there's no way you can call that a critique. No way, zip. And some people might even say, well then why'd you make this video if they're not even critiquing? The point is, that's how you don't give a critique. And in maybe in their minds, they thought they were giving an unsolicited critique to Neko, who frickin' knows? But in some other universe, maybe, they thought they were giving a critique. Take notes, ladies and gentlemen. That's not how you give a good, dank, solid critique. Oh yeah, by the way, if you critique someone, you shouldn't be apologizing. You don't have to apologize if you critique someone. But if you insult someone, I better hope you're sending them flowers afterwards. My condolences. And you know what that means? It's Witchit's little quick tips on how to give critique. Hooray! I've gathered more information. If you would like more information on how to give a good critique or where I found all of my resources for this video, you can check the description below and click through every single link. I have labeled resources, tips, and critique, whatever, blah, 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 because they are very nice and very helpful pieces of information. Let's start with tip number one, the compliment sandwich. You say something good, then you say the critique, then you compliment it again. It's not riveting science, but it is good to ease into critique. It is the softer method than just saying the direct constructive criticism. The next is ask questions. Ask questions about the piece, whether or not just to like fill in things 
or to make the artist feel involved. The it's my style has two sides. Remember that people have their own personal taste. However, a critique primarily based on style is, is going to get no one anywhere anytime soon. If anything, you should be questioning why are the proportions like that and asking why that's their style and perhaps help them using the fundamentals and the elements and blah, 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 the really basic stuff so it looks more visually appealing due to advice that increases your technical skill, not because they changed their style. Offering suggestions, solutions, and advice is also a big one that you can definitely do. It is very helpful, especially if you have more skill or knowledge in the art and you are helping someone who is of less knowledge of you, or perhaps just in general, because maybe they just forgot about that for a second. You never know. The final thing is debatable. Everyone says to encourage kindness and support artists. Yes, it's a very big thing, but for some, sometimes they just need a very to the point, kind of rough critique. And that's why I say be neutral to kind on the critique spectrum. You should never feel like you're asking yourself, is that offensive? Like, did I just say something wrong? You shouldn't feel like you're stepping into a territory where it's a bit hazy on if you're bringing up personal things or if you're going a bit too far. It should always stay neutral to positive. And with that being said, it's also good to have very good communication before the critique if you are giving a solicited critique. If you're giving an unsolicited critique, be careful. Be very careful because that's sometimes not appreciated. Not all artists are looking for critiques, but you are still open to critiques. It does not mean that you want them or you're searching for them, but if you post your art online, you're gonna get people that criticize you. But if it's a solicited critique, which means you ask for permission, you're having a critique session of whatnot, of what sort, then ask them what type of critique do they want. If I'm getting a critique from my good friend and art superior uncle, I want uncle to be as harsh as possible because I know uncle doesn't like sugarcoating critiques. He doesn't like it at all. And I don't want any muddled information. I want it clear to the point. Even if it's gonna feel like it stings a bit, I still want to know how I can fix my art as soon as possible. And yes, sometimes I kind of forget certain critiques or advice, but you know what? I still really like that quick to the point critique style when I'm giving critiques with uncle and if uncle's critiquing me. If I'm giving critiques to my classmates in my drawing class, I'm obviously going to be a lot softer because I don't know how they're going to handle critique and plus, if you don't want to get slammed into a locker, just be a little gentle with them, you know? A little compliment sandwich never hurt anybody. And with that, oh boy, it looks like we've hit the 16, 17 minute mark. It looks like I'm done here. I think I've said everything I need to. You're welcome to have any discussion in the comments about critique, anything you'd like. Just, I guess, yeah. This is, this is it. Welcome back to YouTube Widget, maybe? I don't know. Maybe I'll never upload again. You never know. All right, this is Witchit, signing out.